Okay, so we're going to have a look at the problem where, imagine you're working in radians, you start with sine of 3, then you look at sine of 31, then you look at sine of 314. So basically at each step, you add in another digit of pi, and then calculate what is sine of x in radians. So the next one, sine of 3141, and so on. Are we interested in, is there a limit to this sequence, to this converge, and if so, what does it converge to? So before we can actually calculate this limit, we need to find some sort of nice way of expressing the nth term in this sequence. So let's say that the nth term in our sequence is xn, which is sine of an. So an is going to be capturing this sequence, this 3, 31, 3, 1, 4, 3141, and so on. So we know that a0, if we start with the zeroth term, this is equal to 3. And this is also equal to the floor function of pi. And what the floor function is, this is just a nice way of expressing for any real number x, this is the largest integer less than or equal to x. So just a couple of examples, the floor function of 2.1 takes you down to 2, so you get rid of, truncate away all the remaining decimal parts, you just look at the whole number part. If you have a whole number, this just gives itself back, so the floor function of 2 is just 2. And then the floor function of 1.9, for example, instead of rounding up to 2, this rounds all the way down just to 1, so you chop off the remaining decimal part and get 1. And this is really helpful because now a1, this 31, this is the same as actually having the floor function of 10 times pi. And you can convince yourself 10 pi equals 31.4159, and so on. And then if you have a look at 100 pi, 314.159, you can see that a2, this is actually, instead of writing 100, I'll write 10 squared pi. And we've got a nice way of expressing the nth term here. The nth term, you do pi multiplied by 10 to the power of n, and then look at the integer part of that. So we'll say an is the floor function of 10 to the n times pi. So now we've got a nice way of expressing the nth term in this sequence. So we need to do sine of the floor function of 10 to the n times pi. And then we're interested in what is the limit then goes to infinity of this, of sine floor function of 10 to the n times pi. Does this limit exist? And if so, what's the limit equal to? So just before we find out what happens as n goes to infinity to this, I'm going to write it in a slightly different form, which will be more manageable to deal with. And what I'm going to use is, I'm going to use the angle addition, angle subtraction formulas for sine. So what I'm going to do, first of all, is write this as sine 10 to the power of n times pi minus 10 to the power of n times pi plus the floor function of 10 to the n pi. So this is exactly the same expression. I've just added this and subtracted it. And the reason I've done this is because now I'm going to put this in brackets, which changes this plus sign to a minus sign. So you can see this is still all equal to this. We've got the, this cancelled with this, the two negatives, the positive, the floor function there. And now I'm going to use the identity sine of a minus b equals sine a cos b minus cos a sine b. And I'm going to use this on these two separate pieces here. So this is a and this is b. So putting this into the formula, what do we get? We get sine 10 to the n pi cos 10 to the n pi minus floor function of 10 to the n pi minus cos of 10 to the n pi multiplied by sine of 10 to the n pi minus the floor function of 10 to the n pi. So this has gotten actually a lot more complicated at first glance, but actually if we look closer, we've got sine of an integer multiple of pi this is actually equal to zero, and this kills off your entire first term here. We've also got, this is quite nice, cos of 10 to the n pi. So when n 
when n is zero, we've got cos of pi. Um, when n is zero, cos of pi is minus one. When n is one or greater, you've got cos of an even number times pi, so an even multiple of pi, and this will always give you just one. So cos of two pi is one, cos of four pi is one, and so on. So this is equal to one for n greater than or equal to one. So this is good because we're taking limits as n goes to infinity, so we don't care so much about the first term. So this actually all tidies up to give us just simply minus sine 10 to the n pi minus the floor function of 10 to the n pi, at least for n greater than or equal to 1. So now let's have a closer look at this function inside our sine function, 10 to the n pi minus the floor function of 10 to the n pi. If I call this bn, so bn is 10 to the n pi minus the floor function of 10 to the n pi. Let's see, what is b1? Well, 10 to the 1 times pi, this is 31.4159 and so on. And we take away the floor function of that. It's just 31, and we're left with 0.4159 as a sum. For b2, we're looking at 314.159 one five nine and so on. Take away the floor function of this, so take away the three hundred and fourteen, and this gives us zero point one five nine two at the top. Perhaps start to see a pattern emerging here. B three is going to be zero point five nine two six. So we're looking at basically the truncated decimal parts of the decimal expansion of pi. So this is our B ends. And let's have a think about this. We're going to draw on the fact that pi is irrational here, so I'm not going to prove this, but this is the only sort of big unproven result we'll need to use. So we don't need to use that it's transcendental, we'll just use the fact that pi is irrational. So how is this going to help? Well, the fact that pi is irrational, this means that in its decimal expansion, there are at least two digits which will occur infinitely often. If I say pi is not in the set of rationals, so pi is irrational, this implies that at least two digits appear infinitely often. And I'll just write IO for infinitely often for shorthand in the decimal expansion of pi. Decimal expansion and you can sort of think, if this wasn't the case, if there's only one that appeared infinitely often, including perhaps zero, you'd have something like 3.14159, and then eventually maybe you get to a six, and say six is the one that appears infinitely often. Well, all the others appear only finitely many times, so eventually you'll reach a point where you've used up all the other digits, and you're left with a recurring decimal. And of course, this would be a rational number, and this contradict the fact that pi is irrational. So pi does have at least two digits appearing infinitely often. We know that for sure just using the fact that pi is irrational. So let's say that a is the smallest digit which appears infinitely often, so the smallest such digit. And we'll say b, and this will be the largest such digit. So let's have a think what happens. If you've got, say, your smallest digit, perhaps it's zero, appears infinitely often, then your bn, this will be equal to 0 0.a followed by some other digits infinitely often. And bn is also equal to, because b appears infinitely many times in the decimal expansion of pi, you also have 0 0.b followed by some digits infinitely many times, perhaps b is 9. So you always have 0 0.9 something as we sort of cycle through and chop off digit by digit. And we can use this, these two facts to get some bounds on B. So what is our sort of worst case scenario for kind of a lower bound? So biggest lower bound, well, you know that Bn is less than or equal to 0 0.A followed by B recurring. So perhaps it's 0 0.09 recurring. 
infinitely often in this sequence. And our worst case scenario, an upper bound, so if this is 0 0.9, know that Bn, this is always going to be greater than or equal to, if it's always going to give you a 0 0.9 followed by some stuff, this will always give you 0.b followed by a recurring as your absolute minimum. And this is interesting because now if the limit as n tends to infinity of bn exists, then let's use these inequalities. Well, you know that infinitely often bn is less than or equal to 0.ab recurring. So if this limit exists, then it's, well, it's got to be less than or equal to 0.ab recurring. But this is strictly less than 0.ba recurring, because a and b are different digits. So whatever you've chosen here, where it's 0 and 9, or maybe it's 1 and 2, this is always bigger than this, strictly. But we know that bn is always greater than or equal to this infinitely often. Let's be able to put those there. So infinitely often, bn equals 0.b followed by some stuff. So it's always greater than or equal to 0.ba recurring. So that means that our limit is actually always strictly greater than itself. And of course, this is a contradiction, which means this limit can't exist. So the limit as n goes to infinity of bn does not exist. Now, we can sort of replicate this argument here now. We know that, we know that sine is always monotone when you're, these values are going between 0 and 1. So sine between 0 and 1, so say if you've got x and y, sine x is strictly less than sine of y for all x less than y, where your x and y are between 0 and 1. So we can actually extend this argument. So if the limit as n goes to infinity of sine of bn exists, we can call this L, then we'd be in the same sort of situation where L is less than or equal to sine of 0.a b recurring, which is strictly less than sine of 0.b a recurring. And then this is less than or equal to L. So again, we've got a contradiction. So we can conclude here, therefore, the limit as n goes to infinity sine of bn. So remember bn is 10 to the n pi minus the floor function of 10 to the n pi. So I'll write it out like this. So working back to what were we actually dealing with, what was our bn? This limit does not exist. And of course if this limit doesn't exist then neither does its negative. And if you remember now negative sine of 10 to the n pi minus the floor function of 10 to the n pi. This was our original sequence we were interested in. So now we've shown that the limit as n goes to infinity of our original sequence we were interested in, 10 to the n pi, floor function of that, this limit does not exist. So sadly the limit doesn't exist but we're still not going to go away empty-handed because actually within our workings out there there is quite an interesting result hidden away. We know that sine of the floor function of 10 to the n pi, this was our sequence we were interested in and we know we can write this as negative sine of 10 to the n pi is for all n greater than or equal to 1 minus 10 to the n pi floor function of that and we also know this, if you have a number and you subtract the floor function of it, we saw that this is sort of oscillating up and down in this interval between 0 and 1. So what can we conclude then? Well, 
What do we know about the negative sine of 10 to the m pi? What bounds can we put on this? Minus 10 to the m pi. What a function. Well, you know that this is, because sine is monotone and minus sine is monotone decreasing, this is always going to be less than negative sine of 0, which is equal to 0. And on the other side of things, you know this is always going to be greater than negative sine of 1, which is approximately equal to minus 0.84 in more decimal expansion. So bringing this back to our original sequence, we can say this is always between minus 0.84 and 0. And this was for all n greater than or equal to 1. So what's really interesting about this then is sine of 31, sine of 314, sine of 3141, all of these, how many digits you decide to include in your decimal expansion of pi, these are all negative, with the exception, of course, of sine of 3. So if you remember, for sine of 3, this corresponded to having n equals 0. So where we had sine of, for a function, 10 to the n pi, this is always equal to negative cos 10 to the n pi, using the angle subtraction formula as a key study. It becomes 0 I've taken out here multiplied by sine of 10 to the n pi minus the floor function of 10 to the n pi. So this term here, this is, this is always equal to 1 for n greater than 1, but then it's equal to minus 1 for n equal to 0. So this is where we get the discrepancy. So it's actually sine of 3 is positive, but then sine of 31 and all the rest of these are all negative. So hopefully that's quite a nice fun fact to end on.